time of Jesus. Since before Jesus. But God knows where every one of them is. Amen. And they're going to start preaching and they're going to win people to Christ. It's going to be awesome. And then Revelation 7, verse 9, After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and peoples and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. So they're going to make some converts, man. They're going to do a lot in just seven years. <laughs> Amen. And there's going to be a tribulation church, buddy, that loves Jesus and comes out of that thing because of these people's influence. Look at verse... Uh, Fourteen, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation. There it is. See, this whole seven years, we call it the tribulation period, but for sure that last three and a half years, when that dude goes over to the temple in Jerusalem and sits down claiming to be God, forcing people to worship him, eating their flesh and drinking their blood, like the Eucharist, that being literal blood and literal flesh of Jews, uh, that's an abomination. God calls that the abomination that make a better. God can't stomach that. He hates that. Some man sitting there who's the son of the devil claiming to be God. And um, so God's going to put the squash on him after he sits there claiming to be God for only three and a half years. All right, so we have uh, five points for our message today. And we see how that, praise the Lord, God's going to use these 144,000. It's sort of like what the Bible has over there in the Old Testament. No, the Bible speaks in the Old Testament a lot about how the man in the Old Testament had to keep the law. He had to believe in Jesus and keep the law if he wanted to be saved. And if a man were to fudge and be believing in Jesus, but maybe not keep the law 100%, decide at the last minute to go ahead and break the law and commit adultery or steal or something. Ezekiel 3, Ezekiel 33, there's just all kinds of verses in the Bible. It speaks out. That man, uh, he definitely wouldn't go to heaven. He definitely wouldn't be given life. Because the Old Testament was different. We, they didn't have what we have. They didn't have what we call eternal security. They didn't have an indwelling Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Bible teaches us the Holy Spirit could be upon them and the Holy Spirit would leave them because the soul that sinned, it would, it would die. That soul would die. Because the soul is still connected to the flesh and when the flesh sinned, the soul sinned. That's right. But that all was changed when Jesus died on the cross for us. Now, we are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, the Bible says in Colossians. That's right. It's called the operation of God. When you get saved, when you get born again, God takes his word and cuts between your flesh and your soul. Because the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword and can even pierce the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. We have a hard time discerning between a soul and a spirit. But God has no trouble knowing the difference. And his word can even cut between the soul and spirit. So he's got no problem cutting the soul from the flesh. And he tells us that's what circumcision is a picture of. Now, how many of you have ever watched somebody get circumcised? Amen. Praise the Lord. There's a few of us. I tell you what, I really enjoyed watching my little grandson Obadiah get circumcised. <laughs> we had the uh, Jewish cantor down in Toledo come and do it for us right there in the living room. And uh, he told me how I can get my own equipment and do my own circumcision if I want to, you know. Things get tough around here. We have to do our own to stay alive. We can do it. Amen. So I watched him make sure to know how to do it. Of course, after you fix your bowls and do things on the farm, you know, it gets easier every day, I'll be honest. It's just like dehorning them and everything else. The best family, they have about 30 goats back home in Indiana. And they were telling me that they, they can't hardly even handle be horning their own goats. Of course, that smell is tough for some people. But Brother Dan, he's so far been able to handle it just fine. And, um, it's a rare breed. In fact, I just castrated my bulls this week. In fact, uh, 
So you can do what you got to do. Amen. When you got to do it. And I'm not kidding you. I learned so much that matches everything that Bible says about salvation. Even watching the Jewish cantor circumcise my grandson. And I said, oh wow, that's exactly what happens to a man when he gets saved. Looky there. And it was so instructional for me. And so the Bible tells us that yes, God's going to raise up and praise the Lord at the end of the tribulation period, he's going to rapture, just like he raptures us out before this thing happens, he's going to rapture these dear saints out too. Some of them will be dead, some of them will be alive. But Jesus spoke about that over there in Matthew 24, how two women will be at the middle, one taking the other left. You know it's today because women didn't work in the old days as much as they do now. In fact, they've taken all the men's jobs. I wish they'd all stay home so. And the Bible's right on because, Amen. The Lord's coming back in the air, and there's going to be even a rapture of these tribulation saints. And um, it'll be glorious if we see them standing here. And in the Old Testament, though a man could lose his salvation, the Bible speaks often about how the, what is it that determines salvation? Romans chapter 8. He that has not the Spirit of Christ, he's not his. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have salvation. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you ain't saved. And if you had the Spirit and lost it, like King Saul did, if you had the Spirit and lost it, like Samson did, but he got it back, or like David should have. Now, the Bible tells us David was the only exception in the Old Testament. And that when David sinned, when he sinned with Bathsheba, he even knew. He said, Oh Lord, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Because he knew God had every right to take the Holy Ghost away from him. Uh -huh. But no, David was an exception in the Old Testament because he was a picture of New Testament Christians. And the Bible says David had the sure mercies of David over there in Chronicles. God had given David the sure mercies. Sure mercies. Wow, what a radical concept. And even though David for sure had lost the joy of God's salvation That's right. and had to pray to get the joy back. Right. He didn't have to pray to get his salvation back. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. It was a picture and God uniquely gave David something in the Old Testament he didn't get he didn't give everybody else. And it's like and that's what we have today. We have the Holy Ghost and He doesn't leave us. He stays with us. And the reason he can stay with us because God cut us free from our flesh with the circumcision of God made without hands. And if it wasn't for that spiritual circumcision, then we'd be in rough shape like the Old Testament saints were. So these Jews that God's going to raise up the priests, these 144,000 virgin Jewish preacher boys, what God does is He seals them. As we've already read in Revelation 7, He sends these angels down and they put God's name in their foreheads. And technically, by the time you get to Revelation 13, Satan's son, all he's doing is he's imitating God. That's right. And since God seals his saints, then he wants everybody to take a name, number, or mark in their right hand or forehead. That's right. Copycat. That's right. And so the Bible tells us here, number one, we see that the redeemed will be with the Lord Jesus. Number one, they'll be with Jesus Christ, all 144,000 Jews. To take their stand with Christ, we see that they'll make it all the way through because they're sealed with the seal of God. Again, it's a picture of what eternal security is for us and what David had in the Old Testament. Now, I personally believe that even the whole book of Hebrews, why is it called Hebrews? Because there's 144,000 virgin Jewish preachers that they're going to turn to the book of Hebrews and that like the book of John is, the book of Romans is for us today in this time period when we want to get somebody saved we say well let me show you what's said right here in Romans right here in John